Hello, this is Vichual as a chess noob, learning and having fun with chess. Chess is often thought of as a game of calculation and accuracy, and although there is a truth to that view, chess is also a game of psychological brinksmanship. Emotions such as anxiety, fear, impatience, and joy can often have a major impact on the critical positions of the game, like the one above. Let's go take a look. Now in this game, I had the black pieces, and my opponent played white and began with the Rui Lopez opening. So bishop b5, immediately pressuring the knight on c6. And those of you who follow my channel know that I usually will play the Yanish Gambit, the immediate f5, against the Rui Lopez. In this game, my opponent decided to accept the gambit, which is a mistake because immediately now I have e4 pressuring the knight, and the knight doesn't really have really very many good places to go because all these squares are covered by the knight and the queen. And if you see from this position, you know, black is doing um, quite well. In fact, at higher depth, I think black is a little bit ahead. Now my opponent drops their knight all the way back, um, so a little bit like the uh, reverse Vienna Gambit here, and so black now has a pretty major advantage in development. So develop the other knight, we want to try to, uh, we want to potentially try to castle quickly. Uh, now push the pawn, uh, attacking, uh, attacking that pawn, potentially getting my material back. They push their knight again, that's fine. Uh, so I decided not to take um, to give an extra defender to the knight, takes takes back, uh, and potentially we're doing quite all right. Uh, and you know, they're doing a lot of knight moves here, which is probably not good for them. Here I take, and I think that was a potentially quite a good move. And again here, white has almost no development. The, the only development they did do with the knight has now evaporated. It's not basically in the game anymore, and I'm doing well. Capture, uh, and next turn, here we go. I have now castled. And you can see, in this position, I'm doing really quite well compared to white. Uh, now they move here, and one of the goals of black in the Yanish Gambit is to target this weak f2 pawn. So one, two, and soon to be three. And so that's what I play. And if you look at the feedback here, minus, about between minus three, minus four. So this is really a very good position for black. Now, this is where some of the evilness starts to come out. So the opponent plays the best move. Bishop, um, extra defender to the pawn, counter-attacking the bishop. Now, I played this game on my chestnut air. And I sort of identified reasonably quickly that this was probably the best move, just to trade bishops. Uh, but afterwards it looked like I didn't really have a winning position. There's, there's not a lot of trappiness left after that. Uh, however, I saw potentially I could take that pawn with the knight. So let's say uh, I did do this, uh, and that's the move I did play. Firstly, I'm attacking the queen, so they're going to have to do something. Uh, they can't take with the king, obviously, because that's defended. And if they take with the bishop, now I've got a very, very nice fork. Uh, so I thought that was potentially trappy. Um, so I did do that move, and white finds the best move. And you can see Stockfish reckoned that move was a blunder, and we're almost back to equality from around minus three, minus four. At this position, um, I sort of wondered what to do. I thought for, I think, about three or four minutes. Yeah, almost four minutes on the next move. Um, and this was the best move. I just sort of just probably had to get rid of that bishop, trade bishops, take back. And here I thought for another three and a half minutes. And this is where I make a very evil calculation. Very, very evil calculation. Let's put on the feedback here. I play rook to f3. So it is a blunder, you know. <laughs> you know, white is completely winning in that move. And in fact, I think on higher uh, higher stockfish depth, it's even worse, like eight and a half, moving towards sort of plus nine. Uh, and he looks like white can just capture, right? And they can, and they do do that. And I foresaw this. But what I saw is that this now blocks the queen's uh, defense of this square. So knight now jumps to 
H3, which comes with check. So what, you might think? Well, I just thought that after here, I reckon white is going to play H1. They're going to hide their king in the corner, looks perfectly safe. That's what they did. And what I also saw was these two pieces are in a battery, staring at my pawn on E4. That's also defended by their knight, also defended by, uh, by that pawn. Like it, it, it looks like a slam dunk, right? So it looks like they're going to capture that pawn. And I thought that they were going to capture that pawn with their queen, you know, to trade queens because they're completely up on material. That's what I thought uh, um, that they were going to see. So, uh, so in this move, I thought, look, if I put my uh, rook there to form a battery, they might not do the move. So I instead played rook to f8, attacking potentially that pawn um, to take away perhaps some of the impetus of playing that move, to hopefully take away the impetus of playing that move. I was hoping that they will make that move. And how long did they think about that move? Yep, so just half, about half a minute. Basically, it looks like that's a slam dunk right. But the f2 square. This is a trap, a royal fork. They fell into it uh, and I win the queen. And you can see it is now advantage back to me, about minus three and a half. Now it's, it's still complicated because they've got two rooks and a knight and I've got a queen and a rook and a knight, but I'm about to lose that knight. Uh, and so, you know, white still has a completely playable position here, but after a couple of more moves, like they make that move and then resign, emotional damage. Uh, and this is one of the things about the evilness of that particular line, it sort of takes away your will to play. Uh, and one of the ways to win chess is for the opponent to resign. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is to not only consider the positional impacts of your moves, but also the psychological ones. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.